a, a fantastic atmosphere. Um, great, great fan fan support. Um, we turn our attention to North Carolina. Uh, I thought our kids had a pretty good workout yesterday. They're off today, and then, then we'll be back at it um, tomorrow. North Carolina is coming off a bye week, which um, adds, a, adds a little bit of more urgency for us in terms of, of, of getting ready to, to play against these guys. We're going to go down there and get ready to play on the road. Uh, I get to a team uh, in North Carolina that uh, I feel like keeps improving. You know, they had a game canceled as well, but scored quite a few points on Pitt and, uh, you know, has had an, another week here to get healthy and rested and, and get dialed in. So uh, we'll need a great week of preparation. Uh, you mentioned North Carolina improving. Where have you seen – uh, big strides by the Tar Heels. Well, I just think that you know when they take care of the football, they're pretty prolific offensively. You know, 17 is a fantastic wide receiver. I think Nathan Elliott continues to get better um, throwing the ball, running the offense. They found some running game too. Um, you know, defensively, continuing to kind of grow. They've always been very big and physical up front. And this year is no exception. Um, you know, they've had some young guys that they've played, you know, particularly last year that I think you can tell when you watch the film, they're, they've improved. I mean, they're a little more seasoned group than a year ago. Are you dealing with some sort of sick, twisted, cosmic joke that you might have to have a hurricane to handle this weekend also? <laughs> well, we'll keep a, certainly keep an eye on, on the weather um, and try and be prepared if – as we get on in the week, if if that looks more likely, as we all know, those things can be very unpredictable. So, um, but I guess it's kind of, um, you know, as kind of a, a new person to this part of the country, it's kind of part of doing business this time of year. You know, and the, where I'm from in the spring, you dodge tornadoes, and um, in this time of year, you've got to got to be prepared for that sort of stuff. Devin Hunter on Saturday did not play. Was he out with an injury, or was there some kind of other issue going on? No, we've talked to Devin and um, really feel like we need to continue to develop Devin. So um, it's looking more and more like he's going to redshirt this year so we can continue to bring him along. And kind of with that, is there any maybe position change with Devin, or are you going to keep him at that whip there? No, no. No, no position. I mean, he wants to play. Um, you know, his his heart is is on the defensive side of the ball, and we want to continue to give him an opportunity to have success and 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 come along. I mean, I'm certainly, you know, if he goes through this year redshirting, you know, we'll look at everything in the spring and try and evaluate it where he needs to be in the secondary. I'm not sure about that, but um, but there's been no other discussion about. Um, drastic changes, I guess. And and this is a third road game in the ACC already. What would it do for the confidence of the bunch to be 3-0, not just in the ACC, but 3-0 on the road in the ACC? Well, I don't think we need to focus on that. We need to focus on ourselves and our improvement. You know, I heard quite a bit of chatter about we're 2-0 and in the league and, and all that sort of stuff. And to me, that's counterproductive to what we're trying to get done here. We need to focus on our improvement and finding a way to to get better and give ourselves a chance to win, regardless of a league game or non-league game. Um, you know, also the whole. Uh, you know, we're we're two. You know, we've all, we're still two and zero in the league. Deal implies that if we were to lose a game in the league, then there's nothing to play for, and that's not true either. You know, like we. We have a young group here that needs to focus on their improvement. And uh, we've got to do a great job as coaches continuing to demand that from them on a, on a weekly basis. So certainly we're going on the road. We are playing a conference game. All those things are important. Um, but I think for us, it's, it's can, we, can we continue to bring some of these guys as they get some experience along so that um, we can – we can be better in those individual spots and ultimately better, better altogether. 
Uh, you know, you talked about after the Old Dominion game how the team was down that Sunday. How did the team respond kind of to the whiplash of being in that game and then, and then you know, looking at the final score and it kind of being a blowout? But sure. you know, what was their mood like and what was your message to them? Well, I, I felt like I felt half and half, you know. Um, I'm talking about for me personally, you know, and this is what I shared with them. One, um, I mean, I was just absolutely sick to my stomach that, um, we, w through our, our lack of execution, combined with the other team's talent, I don't want to ever take things away from them. When you play good people, they force you to make mistakes and put, make you uncomfortable. But, um, you know, that we certainly had our opportunities and, and didn't, didn't take advantage of it. And on the other hand, I'm incredibly excited that, that we had some of those chances and, you know, I think we can take something from that game in terms of, uh, how we played at times with a with an inexperienced group. So it was kind of half and half. You know, I told them. You know, part of me is furious. You know, and part of me is is really excited about what you guys can be if you continue to stay the course. Um, so if, as far as their mindset, you know, I thought they were um, obviously disappointed, but uh, you know, took coaching. You know, which is which is easier said than done sometimes. I mean, you've got to look at it with open eyes and, and see that there's some guys out there, you know, just laying it on the line that played particularly well. There's some guys out there that, um, you know, that certainly made some mistakes that, that hurt us, and we've got to all share and own that and and move forward with it. So, you know, they, they certainly weren't all walking around with smiles on their faces, but they certainly weren't in the dumps where we couldn't get them to do anything. So, um you know, I think they understood it. They took it in, uh, and we're all owning it and, and moving forward. And I asked you on uh, Saturday about the 50-plus pass attempts, and I looked back, and you only had that one other time in your career as a coach. When you looked at the film, did you did you still think it was the, kind of the, how the game dictated it, or did you think maybe you guys got to run? Because you were running it well, got away from that a little bit. Um, no, I, I, I didn't feel in retrospect. I thought it was, it was kind of warranted in the game, quite honestly. Diablo has missed two games. Uh, ODU and Notre Dame, the two games struggles defensively. I'm not suggesting he's the main reason for that, but how big is he in that secondary to have his presence back there? Well, I will say this. I was really proud of Tyree Rogers and how he played, um, you know, for his first real action uh, against, against a team like Notre Dame. Certainly it wasn't uh, perfect, but – you know he was competitive in there, and uh, I was proud of I was proud of him. Um, and yeah, certainly Divine has experience and age and size and speed and intelligence and toughness and all those things that that you want in any player at any position. So it certainly plays a role in it. It does, and we're trying everything we can to keep him healthy and keep him ready to go. He wants to go. He is a tough kid that that. Um, you know, I feel for him because he's done everything we've ever asked him to do essentially every day since he's been here. And I want him to have success so badly. And, you know, this team wants him to have success. He's a uh, well-liked, popular member of our, of our squad. So um, he's, he certainly plays, plays a big role. Hey, Coach, you talked after the game the other night about Brian maybe trying to be Superman in some cases. I'm just curious. For him or any player, is it kind of a fine line between being competitive, wanting to make a play, and trying too hard? Absolutely. And that position is highlighted even even more so. It just – there are so many more decisions that go into that, that position. There's so many more uh, opportunities to alter the game positively or negatively. Um, but it's a, it's a fine line between making plays and – because he can make some plays that are pretty special with his arm and – he made some plays like that, and he made some plays with his legs, and it's the old no one to hold them and no one to fold them um, deal. It's it's not it's it's not always clear, and finding that through some experience and, and composure is important at that position. Daz Newsom for them. Um, <clears throat> Dion's brother obviously is a I guess number nineteen. Uh, guy didn't do an awful lot last year playing against you guys, but he's become an essential member of their 
uh, receiving core thus far. I guess he had, what, three catches for 38 yards last season. What have you seen from him, and what does he kind of offer? Sure, quick, explosive player. Um, seems to have um, savvy out there. Um, he's going to have a really good career at North Carolina. He's, um, you know, he played – I believe last year he was a true freshman, this year he's a true sophomore, and you can see he's one of the guys I kind of referred to when we started about them playing young people and, and you you being able to see the difference in their game from a year ago because of because of the experience. This question's a little bit out of left field, but you have three guys on the roster who have dads who played in the NFL, uh, Chung and uh, Wheatley and Porsche. Uh, you've talked in the past about how like having dads who are coaches – Sort of, you see a little bit of traits in a player like that. Is there anything you see out of those guys that have had dads that have been in the NFL that's similar? Well, I think the first thing I would say is they they really do enjoy the game. You know, um, Terrius and Kyle and and Robert has come a long way in a short period of time, but they you there's a sense that they've been around it a little bit. You know, and they um, I think they value or understand the value of practice. They understand. Um, kind of some fundamental principles of the game, but um, and they're not all like that, and it's probably not a great blanket statement to make. But for the three that we do have, I think it's pretty evident that they enjoy playing the game. Is it you ever notice that it's tough for them sometimes when people are like, hey, you know, people like us say, hey, your dad playing this, and that's, that's the first thing they ask them about when they hear it. Well, yeah, you know, I imagine it probably uh, crosses their mind sometimes. I haven't seen it become you know be like an issue, but. Um, and they all handle it a little bit differently, I think. Terrius is a very quiet, very quiet kid, um, un almost unassuming. But um, I don't know. I don't, I don't. I'm sure that somewhere along their career, that bringing up, bringing that up, has probably um, gotten under their skin a little bit before. But they seem to be handling it or adjusting to it well. Uh, Coach Foster talked about um, that, that his defense was kind of feeling the ups and downs, especially with being more inexperienced, kind of, and he pointed to that uh, scoop and score that they were really down even though they didn't allow it. Has that been the problem with the offense at all, just the, the feeling the more the emotions in the game, kind of the swings because um, of the inexperience? Or, 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 I mean, just that group's a little more experienced. Do you feel that that's not much of an issue? On Just on that side of the ball? Yeah, well, first of all, I would say that's, you know, what Bud's talking about is true for the squad in general in terms of it's kind of what we talked about in the very first game, you know, like handling those emotions and those back and forth. It takes a, a person with some real self-confidence to handle those things. And, um, you know, the be best way to handle them is to have handled them before, you know, some experience. But, um, you know, so it's something that we talk about constantly as a team. Um, I don't know w one side of the ball or the other. The offense, you know, in general terms, the offensive kids have a little bit more experience, and you know have maybe been through been through a little bit of that a little bit more. But um, you know, I I would say big picture wise, it's it's something that we're continuing to work through as a as a squad. Is that something that Josh can't replace because he had that you know year where he have been through some <laughs> Sure. Well, I, I don't know that – I guess the way I'd answer that is, yeah, Josh, is a, for a sophomore, is a seasoned veteran and, you know, had some of those natural qualities. Ryan is doing a really good job of that. Um, I certainly don't want to make it sound like, um, you know, the first thing that goes, that goes bad because Josh isn't on the sidelines, people are – um, hanging her head. That's certainly not at all what it is. But there's a little growth there to, to go through, a little maturation process. And, um, you know, Ryan's, and Ryan's done a good job with it. They're, you know, you need some other guys too. You know, when you lose your starter in any position, you need other guys to continue to step up. And that's just not in their play, but in their leadership roles and in their communication.